Running the world's biggest holiday airline can be tough. I really want that man sacked. He didn't have a clue what he was doing. Well, uh, You've just sold me, you've checked my money, I've made for 600 bags, and I can't spot one. Why? So let me get right to the point. But it can also be fun. Every man I see. <laughs> all of my legs, this is all up there. <laughs> so fasten your seatbelts for a summer season with the airline. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. If you can use some exotic booze, there's a bar in Far Bombay. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. What's that? Tell me your name. Tell me what your name is. Tell me what your name is. Whose bag is this? Same. Oh, got mine. Same. Same. It's early May 1997, and as night falls, Manchester Airport is getting busy. Lost a man. It's all right. Come on, darling. Don't worry. Do you want just to go and put a call out? Yeah, we're going to find your mummy. What's your name, darling? Does she speak English? Do you speak English? Oh, oh she's yours. Oh, God. Thank you. <laughs> well, that was that. She doesn't speak English, does she? It's the beginning of the summer holiday season for Britannia Airways. Pat Bain's job is to look after the passengers and their problems. You actually never know what's going to happen. You get passengers who've left the passports, um, there's people who are terrified of flying, but the worst of all are the drunks. Well, I think we just restarted. Let's go and have a look. The Cormac family are due to fly to Spain in two hours, but Grandad Billy has a problem. He's terrified of flying. So he's had a few whiskeys. As you do. Oscar, you know, the coach coming in and he's had too much. He can't take it short and he's had too much. He's terrified of flying. Yeah. Take me down. I'm Belfast. Quiet. Quiet. With the way Dad is, I don't think there's much chance he'll be going. Not the way he's walking. We can't. That's really, really, you know. It's not fair to the other passengers as no, well. It's like 12 as well. Pat must yeah. decide whether Billy is fit to fly. You know, yeah. and so, you know, they have had the occasion to divert. It's not looking good. So I think it would be better. I'll go and see. If you go and have a yeah, coffee with him, yeah. Washing, All right, whatever. you're right. Don't you worry. Be OK. He's a bit nervous, isn't he? Yeah? So don't get cross with him. All right. Just for your information, family of four, just approach check-in. And um, the mother has forgotten the passport and it includes the daughter on it. Hello. Uh, our Where do they live? Can they get the um, As far as uh, the agent says, it's Bradford. Cathy Duffy is the other passenger services officer on duty tonight. Anyone can actually send it. How far away is Bradford? How long does it take to get to Bradford? It's quite a way, isn't it? Yeah. It's quite but at a least way. an hour. Shot in the dark, really. So you've got your passport, and it was the wife that had the daughter on it. Yeah, it's mine. The Ritchie family may lose their holiday because Jane Ritchie has left her passport at home, 60 miles away in Bradford. Their only hope is for a neighbour to get it to the airport inside an hour. Aisha Keithley is 18 and works in an office. But really, she wants to be a pop singer. Her best friend Jane isn't convinced. Do you have to? You definitely me, Aisha. Yeah, I love you. Tonight, Britannia will fly Aisha and Jane to Ibiza. Aisha has a chance to make her dream come true, an audition for a singing job in the resort of Es Canar. 
She's always got to have attention. That's Aisha. Sometimes I really get embarrassed for her because she never does. And she doesn't care what anybody thinks. It's just Aisha for you. Uh, I know I will get there. I'll be on top of the pops this time next year, giving the Spice Girls a run for the money. Reckoning loads of money myself, living a life of luxury. Um, but I will make it. I know I'll make it. Definitely. <laughs> One hour to the flight, and Billy's chances of getting to Spain haven't improved. Pat has made her decision. She won't let him fly. Britannia takes a tough line with passengers who turn up drunk. You can't walk, and I don't think it's fair to the other passengers. It could be along the plane. The captain's not going to be happy at all, but I'd like to get the family to go, you know, the gentleman and his wife and the children, because it's, it's not fair for the children, really. Angela, what a lovely name. Don't cry, Angela. We'll get you on that plane. Don't cry, darling. I've got to show. Angela, don't cry. It's not a problem. The Ritchie family's chances of flying are also slipping away. Just 15 minutes before their flight, and no sign of the missing passport. No, no, no. Watch yourself. Don't get knocked down. We need you. I'm going, to sort, I'm going to sort you out a flight because I can't let you travel this What's in. happening here? I'm going to sort you out another flight. We're going to go through now and I'm going to sort something out for you. Yeah. I would appreciate it if you'll come with me. I'm right. staying here. Well, Lies. I can't let you stay here. You've got to Why? Come. Can you? Because I've got well, to I sort out. Well, I can say it. I'm staying here. Well, Lies. Mr Cormac, I've got to sort yeah. something out for you, I'm Mrs Cormac. I'm just going to be a shite. Well, uh, do you want to go on I've holiday? I've been left there. Well, look, it's through your own fault. It's not, not my go. fault. It is Mr. your Cormac, fault. It's not my fault. I can't fault. let you well, go this Come with me mouth. now and let's sort something out. We've got to go rebook with the travel agent now. Have we? Oh, yes. Rebook? Yes. Oh. Yes. Britannia's Alpha Fox just landed from Greece. In less than an hour, it will take off again for Spain. Britannia's plane spends 17 hours a day in the air. It's time for boarding, but there's one person missing. It's all right, don't worry. It's all right. I can't it's let you go today, Mr. Gorman. It's your own fault. All right. Go on, Maybe don't go away tomorrow. tomorrow. Right, gate 214. You go down now and get yourself on the flight, all right? And with the kids. No, you're all right. They've got your tickets. Yeah. They've got all your things down there. Right. Just keep walking. You see how you see the numbers at the... Joe, you see how you see the numbers there, gate 210? Yeah. Just keep going down, you'll see 214. 214, Joe. What's happening there? We're going to Joe, go on, you go and have a nice holiday. Joe. Yeah, I'm over here. Joe, 214. Joe. Thrust levers reverse, checking auto speed brakes and auto braking. Rotates. So what are you going to Ibiza for? To get an audition. Excellent. Ooh, marvellous. So if we go down to Ibiza, we might see you. Excellent. Yes. Actually, I'm, I'm trying to think, who do, who do you look like? Because we could get you on stars in their eyes. I look, look like, like? Um, I've been trying to look like her out of Abba. What's she called? Oh, yes, Anietta. Grab up. Are you jaded, chap? How the devil are you doing? Brian John Aldridge, BJ to his friends, is chief steward for the flight. Well, this is sausage, egg and bacon. That's mine. Thank you very much. What have you ordered, gentleman. Kevin? You're not having anything? No. Can't tempt you with anything? <laughs> Been with the company too long. Mm -hmm. Sit a bit. Some of the cabin crew, they have some good jokes about pilots. Um, one of theirs is what the pilots use as contraceptives. We use our personalities, apparently. I don't know what they mean. Sunrise over Girona and a plane load of sleepy passengers except one. Aisha 
has found a captive audience. Maybe I just wanna have it all up. It makes a sound like thunder. It makes me feel like rain. Like food. This is very bright. Um, yeah, she's good. Very good. Very brave. <laughs> Amazingly brave. Back in Manchester, it looks like the end of the line for the Ritchie family. The flight is now closing. Just rung off to see if they can delay the flight to the next. Kathy is trying to sort out another flight but it will mean missing three days of the holiday. They've made it, with seconds to spare, thanks to the next door neighbour. Bless them. I'll have them to do it now. Stop No. I'm getting on my nerves now. Okay. I've had enough. Do you want something to ease her off? Oh, yeah, there's something there. Give us a tenner. Oh, f***. I was going to tell you. 30. Touchdown in Ibiza. Is that one as well? Yeah. Sure. Why not? Today, BJ's off to Venice and not looking forward to it. This is going to be a nightmare flight. This really is. Which I can use paper. Venice passengers can be quite upmarket, so they want their drink and they want their meal and they want their duty free goods. And um, we've got precious little time to, to actually deliver. But there is one thing in our favour. On this particular flight, we serve a cold afternoon cream tea. It goes down really well with our passengers and keeps them happy. But sometimes, even the best laid plans don't work out. Hello. I believe you want to speak to somebody in charge. Or BJ. Yeah, OK, fine. It took an age before we got the tea with our tea. And we no, think, we I think, know, I we know. Think, we think, we think, well, I'm sure you know because you've arranged it. It may not be for you to arrange, but if you could convey to your company our complainant. Yeah. Um, firstly, it's inept organisation. Secondly, it's extraordinarily inhospitable. Thirdly, we understand why you've done it, because you uh -huh. want to sell your cold drinks. But the whole thing is a debacle. To be honest, from a safety point of view, it, 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 wouldn't, it wouldn't be right to have a, a coffee pot and a teapot on, on, a, on the top of a drinks cart. Uh, when, when, you, when you need two hands to pull a drinks cart, you know, if you've ever pulled a drinks cart, you'll find it's very heavy and you need two hands. And to, to have an unsecured teapot with, with boiling hot water in, I don't think is, is a particularly good idea. And we haven't we haven't got we haven't got enough crew to do a drink service, or and, and for, at the same time some other crew members to do a tea service. That's your problem. That's your problem. Of course problem. it is. You've Unfortunately, it it's, it's the way the it, it's the way it works for us on a short flight. I'm sure it works for you because you want to sell your beastly drinks. Well, but if you serve tea, you should be serving tea. It's absurd to to, to serve sandwiches, scones, cream. And a biscuit uh -huh. sounds like without the tea. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. This is the tea service without the tea. That's ridiculous. You can't well, defend it. It's indefensible. There was this lady who was offered a drink and she said, Oh, yes, I'll have a G and tea. That's a gin and tonic to you, dear. And this stewardess, quick as a flash, just said, um, Would you like ice and a slice? That's frozen water and a piece of fruit to you. And I mean, I think it's a classic. Did she say I think, anything? I think it's probably gobsmacked. She probably couldn't say anything. The morning after, and Billy's feeling contrite. I can't believe it. I didn't mean to get that way. 
just that one to be on. It looks like we've got some availability, so all oh, fingers crossed we should I'm get on this flight. It. Don't worry about it, let's just get you on your flight. All you've got to do today is get the plane and be a good boy. <laughs> It's two hours to Aisha's audition. Success could turn a week's holiday into a summer season of work, her first big break. There are no signs of nerves. I never get embarrassed when I'm singing in front of people. I just need to let it all out and I'm away. It's hard for people to get me off. Anita War is entertainment's manager for the hotel. It's her decision whether to book Aisha. Sadly, it's a no. She needs a lot of practice, I think. And she's singing the wrong song. She sang, the, I mean, the two that she tried today weren't quite right for her, I don't think. I think she, she could have done better if she picked the two different better songs. I think you picked the wrong song. I think you picked the wrong songs to be honest. Yeah. I mean Whitney Houston is like everyone does Whitney Houston. Yeah. Everyone um, wants to sing Whitney Houston and I think it's the hardest song to sing. Yeah. You need to work on it. You need yeah. to work on it before you before you get into the big time I think. Yeah. You've got a long way to go. I mean it's a it's you know it's, it's difficult. <laughs> Have you ever done singing lessons or anything like that? I have took it bad, I am upset, but, um, you know, everyone who's, who's made it now, they must have been criticised one point in time, so it's only my first, first knock back. I've probably got many more to come. Venice. And more problems for BJ. Be my husband's got a broken bone in his back. Oh, and we right, specifically okay. asked for leg room in the front. Yeah. You know, because yeah. it's, and I'm a bit claustrophobic, I can't sit in the middle one. <coughs> and when we went into them probably, you know, through Thompson's, they said there'd be no problem that they yeah. would be able to have a seat like yeah. that, you know, and that would be fine. Yeah. It was fine coming out, but coming in we'd so, have So you were given extra leg room yes, seats definitely. on the outbound flight? Yes, definitely. We had seats like that there, in the front, like those. Oh, right, and okay. Fine, that was lovely. But this seat, I knew straight away when they gave us our numbers that yeah. we wouldn't be happy here. Yeah. Um, right, well, the best thing that I can do, I can have a word with the lady and gentleman. Oh, no, no. No, no, no it's not fair to change part somebody part else over. I mean, we asked for these seats, otherwise we'd have cancelled the holiday. Yeah. And so I'm going to be stuck in the middle like this, and yeah. shaking yeah. like a leaf, yeah. so I just can't stick it. You're not too keen on flying, and, and, and plus you're claustrophobic yeah. as well. Terrible. In, in, well, I'm only, I'm only explaining the situation as it stands at the moment. We don't, we have no information about this at all. So whether or not the travel agent just hasn't passed that on, or, or the information hasn't, hasn't come from the UK to the check-in desk here. If it, if it was honoured on the outbound flight, then obviously that information did get passed on. If it hasn't been passed, Onto here, you get no idea. You know, well, all I can say so is that we've, we've got no information. You know, we've we've got we've got some surnames here for extra legroom. You know, yes. and, and most of them have been honoured. Yes, too. you know, just the ones who were unlucky as usual. Yeah, like we were in the hotel last seem, week. It yes. seems that way, and, it, and sometimes it seems to go in cycles. Right, like, like no, you could say that again. Yeah. <laughs> On the flight deck, Captain Clack has a problem too. Maggie, what's happening? We just the lost the slot. What's happening with the, how many have we got? 337 plus 2. They're saying 339 plus 2, and we've got 337 plus 2. So that's Unfortunately, the number of passengers that we counted on board the aeroplane didn't tally with the number of passengers given to us by the agent, which basically means that we have to count again, because obviously we can't depart unless we 
know that we've got everybody on board, particularly for security reasons, because their baggage might be in the hold of the aeroplane. Um, unfortunately, we've now missed our air traffic control slot, and we have to apply for another one. BJ is losing his battle. She's adamant that, oh no, she's going she's gonna to stay in those seats and she's going to be thoroughly miserable, unfortunately. And, and I can't win around. This is a, one of those no-win situations. I'd like to help her, but she doesn't want me to help. Venice Air Traffic Control can't offer a takeoff slot for another 45 minutes. Captain Clack isn't happy. It's time to get on to operations control in Luton. It's Peter Clack here down in Venice on Yankee Bravo. Good evening, Yankee Bravo. Ops must call Brussels, where all European flights are coordinated. I've got a call sign for you. It's a Bravo Alpha Lima 248 Bravo on the ground in Venice. No, that would be ideal, yeah, thanks very much. Our operations have got us now a departure time of 1900, which means that we can start our engines, basically. So we'll be starting our engines now and getting underway. I've been flying now for 22 years and uh, I honestly can't think of a better job in the whole world. I mean, we see the most incredible sights from the flight deck. Um, we see satellites come across regularly, we see shooting stars. At the moment, we've just had Venus rise up above the horizon as we climbed out. And just above it is the crescent of the moon. We, we really are very privileged to do the job that we do and we see some wonderful things. Well, then what do you suggest I do? You tell me. No, 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 no. If you're saying that I'm not doing my best, if you're saying I'm not doing my best, then tell me what I can do to do my best. That's all right. Now you can't stick like this for two hours with a broken back. I'll be all right. All right. All right. But you've had a good moan, and, and it's oh, best to get it off no, your chest. No, I haven't got it off my chest yet. I can assure you, I'm quite calm at the moment. I'm shaking like a yeah. Yeah, yeah. I hate being stuck in the middle like this. It's dreadful. And that is the most beautiful view of Geneva tonight. I could look at that forever, I think. Manchester. And Aisha's back. Look, look, all on my legs. Aisha, I ain't got your passport. <laughs> all on my legs, blisters all up there. All on my stomach. I was in absolute agony a whole other day. <laughs> but I've got a tan, so it was worthwhile. <laughs> Stardom still waits. In the end, Billy Cormack lost only one day of his holiday. He blamed his condition on mixing whiskey with medicine he'd taken to calm his nerves. Last summer, 50 Britannia passengers were refused flights. More than 500 passengers arrived at check-in without valid passports. But there was only one Aisha. Shut up! On board airline tonight, fashion tips for new recruits. Passport problems at Manchester. I want that man sacked. I really want that man sacked. He didn't have a clue what he was doing. And meet the mother of the bride. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away If you can use some exotic booze There's a bar in far Bombay Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away If there's one thing guaranteed to cause headaches at the airport, it's problems with passports. 
particularly when they go missing just as the flight is about to close. Has anybody found any passports, boarding cards and tickets at all? No, thank you. But Britannia staff know their passengers well. I'll tell you what, I know it's been done. Excuse me. Do you have any objection to me going through your bag? No. You Are can. you sure? No. You well, can. watch me and then you know. Yeah. All right. You All right. Yeah. No. Not that I don't trust you. Yeah. Right, because sometimes. They're here. Oh, got them. Where got they? them. In the pocket. Okay. Yeah, they just found right, them. Right, the tell you what to do. Put those with that. Here we are. The airline staff have seen it all before. Your mum crazy. Mr. Coleman has a secret. His son Leslie is 16 and should have his own passport, but he's on his mum's. So the family are pretending he's 15. Is he 15 or is he 16? He's 81. I've got an out-of-date passport here that the lady said, uh... Hi. The boy's 16. What? Okay. Don't okay. tell you when you nap it up now. I haven't. Don't start with me. You nap it up. Listen, on your bike. I'm telling you, I'm on your bike. Out went gone. I'm telling you. That was... Just, I... Just building up. So he's on your passport? He's on my passport. No. Um, Mrs. Coleman is forced to confess. Yeah. I've told a little book. Yeah, you should be quiet. All right, all right. Um, right, because I'm just getting a bit uptight. Yeah. <laughs> and Palmer suddenly seems a long way away. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Runcorn. Absolute bedroom. I never even finished packing till last night. So, whatever I've forgotten now, tough. Anne Brain has her work cut out. She's organising a party of 11 for a wedding trip, 4,000 miles away in the Dominican Republic. Mind Cal, please. <laughs> I don't believe there's my legs have cramped up. I'll just show you the wedding dress. Just Anne's daughter, Anne Marie, is the bride. She's going to marry her childhood sweetheart, her cousin, Paul Crow. Are you Ethan? The couple already have a baby daughter. Yes. Ryan, have you had enough to eat, darling? And today they have another reason to celebrate. Good news, Anne-Marie is pregnant again. Early days, yes, but... I hope it's another girl that'll give me two of each, then. <laughs> Paul wants a boy. Paul wants a boy. Well, you get what you're given in this life, girl, and that's it. So far, so good. 11 people, 25 pieces of luggage and one wedding dress on the bus. The whole trip has cost £10,000 and the family are determined to have a good time. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Hey, that's a Daisy Abertonian song, that. <laughs> At Manchester, good news for the Colemans. So just go through the system as normal at the other end. Just act normal and just go through. Normal. OK, thanks All right. very much. OK, darling. See you All later. Right. Bye. 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 Kathy Duffy is prepared to let the family take a gamble. The airline itself, through experience over the years, we tend to have little guidelines. We know where we can take a chance and where not to. Sometimes we might send a telex ask, requesting, explaining the problem. If it's something like this, he's only just turned 16, he's still young, he'd probably get away with it. Well, it was a long time coming, but... Here at last. Here now. <laughs> the wedding party arrives, and there's one small worry to be cleared up. Do you know if this travel on the plane? Do we go through the Bermuda Triangle, or do we go round it? Because she keeps telling me we're going through it. Well, you will go through the Bermuda Triangle. Woo! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wish you that. <laughs> Told you. The Britannia Training Centre at East Midlands Airport. These hopefuls fought off 8,000 applicants to win a place on the cabin crew training course. Aaron Smith is a former hairdresser. His new roommate, Jason Ravengard, used to stack shelves in Tesco. 
Uh, my name's Tracy and I'll be taking the course. The four-week course is gruelling and trainees must pass every stage to keep their jobs. Let me go for... <laughs> no, not really. If I get through, I'll be so happy, yeah. Because I want to do it so much, I've really got to make sure that I get through. It would look failure as well to go back so, and say, um, I didn't do it. In a few minutes. There's nothing to worry about. <laughs> we don't bite. <laughs> Yeah, One of the things I'm looking forward to is working with the gay stewards. Puff does not bother me. I'm not. I'm not like. I'm not racist in that way at all. There's no competition, so it just leaves all the rest of the girls there for for me. You know, out of the straight ones and the gay ones, who's think it's going to get the most attention? I know it's hard to say don't. You know, try and relax. But you've done the hard part. There's going to be difficult. It's going to be laughs. It's going to be tears. But we'll get there. Yeah. Britannia plane Yankee Delta needs 45 tonnes of kerosene for its nine-hour journey to the Dominican Republic. The crew are all present and correct, all except one. Mum! Oh, at last. Here you are. Thank you, Florence. That's all right. I wish you'd give up smoking. Oh, and give up everything else while I'm at it. That's all right. Thanks. OK, I have sugared. Chief Steward BJ has had an unusual tennis accident. I was just standing at the net, minding my own business, and a volley hit me in the nether regions. And uh, I think, without being melodramatic, I fell to the ground in extreme agony. One emergency operation later, and BJ has been ordered to rest. I must sound very sad, but I, I love my work. I love my job. And to be stuck here, you know, walking around like John Wayne, um, it's just not funny. 12-year-old Jerry ann Blaney should be going on a fortnight's holiday to Ibiza with her best friend's family. But there's another passport problem. She does not hold a document. Are they going to send it out? Kathy Duffy is on the case. Jerry ann is not on her own passport, she's on her mum and dad's. Is it your mum and dad's or just your yeah, mum's? Yeah, mum and dad's. And uh, they thought that, um, come here, look. They thought that uh, she didn't need her own passport till she was 14. So, and we didn't know the difference because our two were on mine, so we, we, none of us knew. Kathy has contacted Ibiza to see if Jerry ann will be allowed in using her mother's passport. Uh, they sent a telex to my pizza to try and uh, find out, but they don't say they said they don't hold that much hope. No, because it's not. Because, it's, you know, if it was out of date, it would have been more. Hi, can I help you? One wedding dress. Oh, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> For trying on? <laughs> yeah. Right, thank you. <laughs> my <laughs> word. It's heavy, isn't it? Suiting well, we're not snitching, oh, but the, the groom's nice. suit in there as well. <laughs> Is it? On tray? Yes. Cream. White. White. Yeah. Don't know if she's getting white. <laughs> <laughs> Hello there. With boarding well underway for the Dominican Republic flight, stewardess Lisa Louie is keeping an eye out for nervous passengers. Hello there. Yeah. Right. So what, what is it that makes you nervous? I've flown so many times. Have you? I just get worse all the time. Why is that then, do you think? June Murray is taking her son Sean on a long promised holiday, but she's terrified. It's not a problem, we'll leave you on your own. You know, you're going to be with us all the time. And we'll look after you. Is it? There we are. Oh, we're getting in a bit of a stew. Right, Sean better go by the window. You don't want to see, do you? That's it. Is that all right there? With June in a new seat, Lisa has a secret weapon to take her mind off the takeoff. Right, June. Her cyber pet. The time is now, so you have to concentrate, so you won't even be able to think about anything else. You've got 11 minutes till he wakes up. Are you going to be all right with him? All right. But the cyber pet is soon forgotten. If we ask you to leave the aircraft urgently, low-level lighting will direct you to the exits. 
In the unlikely event of an emergency situation, we will ask you to take up the brace position, like this. How's the uh, young lady? Jerry Ann's flight is boarding, and Ibiza have come back with their decision. Yeah, you, no, it's a no-no. She can't. I'm really awesome. sorry. I thought you knew at check-in. I'm sorry. No, no, um, no. it's no. I knew it'd be no. I mean, at least we tried. Yeah. Right, they will. She'll be looked after. I promise you. And I take it her mother's coming. Yeah. Yeah. Right. All right, darling. You have to put your cigarette out, please. But Jerry Ann's parents can't get here for another three hours. <laughs> a watch? <laughs> I don't think so. An hour into the a flight watch. and Lisa's working hard. But there's still time for a joke. You, you are joking. <laughs> you have to sit down, you know, with your cigarettes. Sorry, I put that out for me alone. OK, thank Sorry. you. Sorry. Well, excuse me for just looking su surprised while I'm doing a drink service. However, I'll just let everyone wait and I'll just go and get your watch, all right? You wait. You are screwed, you are, yeah. Do you know that customer's always right, Malarkey? Yeah. Not. Right. Cheers. Cheers. Best wishes, so let's let the baby's head. Cheers. Back at Manchester, check in is all but deserted, but Jerry Ann is still waiting. Halfway over the Atlantic, and even the crew have time to relax. She's on board the flu now. Have you seen what they've done to me now? She's only drowned in the sun. Two glasses of vodka and the tea mini and all over me dress. But it was my fault, wasn't it? My neck is a soup. And the top. She had exactly the same amount. Yeah. So it'll basically be 26 in each. The groom is asleep, happy in the knowledge of his bride's affections. We've been thinking about it, but he actually asked me at the baby's christening, which was May of 96. I got down and proposed in front of everybody. And it was a couple of days later that I was flying away. So when I come back, he had the ring for me, gave it to me. I, want, I just wouldn't change anything about him. To me, he's just perfect as he is. That's it. Isn't he? Take a seat. That's it. No, this is June. This is our son. This is Sean. Yeah, this is Sean. Absolutely terrified. She's doing very well. June has been coaxed into the flight deck. It's marvellous. Where's my cyber pet? <laughs> you killed my cyber pet? June, I don't believe you. You were supposed to look after him. Did you? Nice. <laughs> Occasionally, we have people who do come up onto the flight deck uh, who uh, do have a fear of fear of travel, and it does seem to help them. Uh, and and sometimes it's wonderful to see the transformation how they uh, they go out and they're they're a changed person. Uh, but um, I think that this poor lady, she really has uh, got it really bad. I really did feel sorry for her. Three in the morning, but not everyone's tired. Join in, everybody! Jerry Ann's dad is finally here. Hello. I'm really sorry about this. But he has also had a difficult night. But she needs her own passport. You know what? Honestly, I've just come back from this. I've had a terrible motorbike accident. Lost my mouth. You know, mm. uh, we've gone through hell. We, we... He says he was acting on the advice of an airport worker. Right. That they can Unfortunately, it was a worker from a different airline. This should never have happened. Honestly, we were really specified to the man on the desk. You know, well, apparently, Jerry Ann no. was saying that her grandmother had said that she needed her own passport. Yeah, no, no, that's exactly she why. To know. Exactly yeah. why we specified and to the man on, on the desk, and he went, "No, you don't have to change it for another two years at least." I can't believe oh, that. Oh, honest to God, he was absolutely 
inadequate for the job. He did not have a clue. Well, we're looking to Oh, I want, I, want it, I want it sorted. I want that man sacked. Wow. I really want that man sacked. He didn't have a clue what he was doing. We'll, get, we'll look into it, definitely. Oh, I won't rest until this man's recommended. I mean this, honestly, I mean... Britannia will still fly her to Ibiza when she has her own passport. You can't rely can't. on what somebody on a check-in desk says. If you read the passport, it says... See, that's why I mentioned Grandma. Got to be the Grandma it? knew that she couldn't travel. Bye-bye. Sit on this side. Uh, yeah, whatever, yeah. Day three of the course, and the trainees are about to get their uniforms and some strict rules about their appearance. So, um, you know, we do ask you to wear red lipstick and to wear eye makeup, foundation. But anyway, if anybody wants to have a go, does anybody want to volunteer to sit up here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Too much broken in it now. Uh, Just a wee bit. Yeah, yeah. that's a wee bit. It's lit. It's cool. That's um, one. I thought that. Yeah. But uh, I'll, I'll nip it in the bud. Going to be transformed tonight. You don't wear lipstick normally. You don't wear eyeshadow. Is <laughs> that a hair grip? Yeah, it's my lucky hair grip. It's tie grip. Why is it lucky? Well, it's just because it keep me in touch with my hairdressing side, yeah. <laughs> Just in case I need to be on the aircraft and I see a girl, I can just... Slip it in? Yep. The hair grip? Yep. <laughs> the other bit comes the leader. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've all been waiting for, it gives me great pleasure to present to you your Elizabeth Emmanuel designer uniform. Britannia are proud of their uniform. Each complete outfit costs nearly £2,000. thing about it, I've been waiting for it all night. I've been sitting in there watching all the models and this is the best thing about it now. I'm going to go and get the box, it's like Christmas, I suppose. Anything, boys? Oh, it's like Christmas. <laughs> I want a bit more than the uniform for my Christmas present. <laughs> <laughs> now the moment of truth. <laughs> Next day, a mixed reaction to the uniform. The hat and the scarf because it gets to my hair. The thing is, I've got really big ears. Look, they stick out really bad. <laughs> and do you know what I want to do with mine? I want to put it on. I tuck my ears in, but I can't because then, <laughs> look, they just stick out at the bottom. But I'm really worried that, like, when I've got it on, like, oh, look at my ears. No, oh, so uh, you know they are. Stupid. I'm really paranoid about them. When it was school, they used to call me trophy head. <laughs> this is how you should do it. <laughs> never. That like, is not me. I would never pull this bag. I don't care how heavy it is, never. It just, it's got a side handle, so perfectly for carrying on side. It gives the right impression as soon as I walk through the crew room. The girls can see he's straight, the blokes can see he's straight. That way the girls know what to go for and the blokes know to stand back. Peace at last on the flight to the Dominican Republic, just as it's about to land. 50, 30, 10. The big day has arrived. Anne-Marie and Paul are wearing full wedding regalia, even though it's 90 degrees. The Caribbean is the fastest growing destination for weddings abroad. Britannia takes 5,000 wedding parties there every year. When 
Lord of the Rings. Music <laughs> and passion, we're always the fashion of the go go. Lisa and the cabin crew are enjoying one of the perks of the job. Four days in a top Caribbean resort hotel. Put that on your head. On the training course, the pressure is mounting. Have an emergency. Two. Where are you situated? Um, which one's the emergency of the... the emergency doors? L not three. Daily exams mean nightly revision, often into the early hours. And people mm. say you're just a trolley dolly, a glamorous if anybody waitress. anybody says we eat trolley dollies, I'm going to smack them right in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I will not let them leave me, I tell you. As well as passing the civil aviation exams, the trainees must be word perfect for their practicals. In case of emergency, Oxygen masks will be provided. They will drop down from the unit above your head. To activate the oxygen, pull firmly downwards on the mask and place over the nose and mouth. Your seatbelts must be fastened when the fasten your seatbelt sign is illuminated. The seatbelt fastens, adjusts, and opens. <laughs> Like this. Yeah. Back in the Caribbean, the cabin crew remember an absent friend. Yeah, why didn't he come? I don't know. Why didn't he come? No, and he was oh, rusty. Do you even tell him? Well, what happened was he. Um, you know, he plays tennis. DJ plays tennis. Yeah, he plays it. I think it's quite plays good. It. Yeah, he does play it quite good. And um, a tennis ball hit him in the uh, ghoulies. No! Mm. <laughs> the only one! Oh! Golden Bennett. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie Coleman was allowed through Palmer Airport without a passport. BJ was fully recovered and back to work in 10 days. And Jerry Ann finally made it to Ibiza two days late. <laughs> On board airline tonight, no smoking for the passengers. You just saw me, you've checked my money, I've made for 600 bags, and I can't smoke one. Why? Too much for the cabin crew. <laughs> well done and smouldering passions on the training course. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. If you can use some exotic booze, there's a bar in Far Bombay. Come fly with me. Let's fly, let's fly away. Oh, 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 oh. Is this where I can hold you with? I like this. Britannia Airways flies 50,000 nervous passengers a year. So that I don't lose you. Come on, let's have a look. And you're never too young to be scared of flying. Right, will you come here with me? I don't like aeroplanes. You don't like aeroplanes? No. Why not? What's wrong? I don't like <laughs> It fly right up into air and I don't like them. Yes, but it's taking you on a lovely holiday, isn't it? Yeah. Right, come on. Let's see if there's any ladies no, there. Come on, come on. 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 Come I have, to, I have to confess, this is a first. This is a first. Twelve-year-old Adam Mullaney has left his dental brace on his meal tray. I mean, surely you know when you've lost a brace or you've got a brace and you... I mean, I had a brace when I was a kid. Um... Oh, God. Uh, there was no easy way of doing this, really. See the pilot. 
Should we see if you can see the pilot who's driving the aircraft? That'd be very exciting. Let's go see where. No, it won't. No, it's not going anywhere yet. I think so. Let's see there. Let's have a look. What does this do? What's that? Let's have a look. Hey! Right, plug them in here, let's have a listen. What's, what's going on in here? Right, let's have a look then. Right, um, just to help me find this, what does it look like? It's like a little pink thing, it's got some metal coming out the side. What colour? Pink. 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 Yeah. With bits of metal? Yeah, yeah. all around the edge. It's around the edge. Like, it's like a crab. Like a crab. It's pink with grey legs. So I'm looking for a pink crab with metal legs. Yeah. About the size of your palette. Well, it's palette. Well, it's palette, yeah. <laughs> and it's wrapped in tissue. And it's wrapped in tissue. So I've got to look through all the. <laughs> 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 Couldn't have just left it on the side, could you? Oh, no. <laughs> right, OK, not a problem. So a pink crab, the size of his palette, with metal legs, wrapped in tissue. Easy. And uh, we have uh, one birthday on board the aeroplane today, uh, Mr. John Bateman in row five. I'd like to wish you a happy birthday from Linda, Ricky, Laurie and Jay. <laughs> Simon Bates, eat your hearts out. Oh. Hey, what's this? What's this? What's this? That's Yay! it! Well, the bad news is I found it. <laughs> and the good news is you're going to have to wear it. Oh, that's brilliant. And I've washed it as well. <laughs> you're welcome. Thank God for that. Yeah. On the cabin crew well, training group, course, um, likely lads Aaron and Jason are on a mission to get a date with Tracy, their trainer. Tracy's car. <laughs> no wonder she's doing 110 passes with her air, oh, no, air brushing this morning. She never noticed morning. this morning, did she, when the, um, she came out, come past us? I tell you, if this is what she can afford, though, you know what I mean? Blanket on the back seat. <laughs> Blanket, pillars, she's got the works. I could just pick her up and uh, whisk her away. Take her off home, oh, yeah. She's nice. Oh, there you go. I would never say that to her. So, what did they actually say? Did well, both of them were in there and they both said, Would you, What are you doing tonight then? How do you fancy coming out for a drink? And I said, No, I said, I've got the kids. And they said, well, we'll come round to you then. We'll bring this some... This is Jason and Aaron. Jason and Aaron, yeah. Hey, that's OK. Oh, excuse me. Yes. Sorry. Uh, um, have you got any spare nappies, please? Sorry. It's just no, we, we Today, the trainees are learning how to deal with you problem don't. passengers. Oh, we've just been stuck at the airport for four hours with these, this blinking rain and everything. Um, I have, I've run out of nappies and my, my little Josie needs... Yeah, really, honestly, I'm sorry, but it's... Oh, don't worry, my darling. It's <laughs> all right. It's well, all yeah, right. Oh, I'm sorry, but sorry, the smell as well. Sorry, it's just the customers. All right, all right. I tell you what I do. I'll go and have a word with the other passengers with babies. See if they've got any nappies Please, on board. Please, I'm sorry. If they've got any spare ones, can then it, um... can it be quick? Sorry, because it's just leaking right. through on the side here. All right, no worries. I'll get you some. Don't uh, worry, my is it darling, leaking badly or is it? Yeah, I know. Badly. Yes. Yeah, oh. Very good. Very good. How do you think Aaron handled that then? Really well. He did. He did. It was good thinking as well about asking another passenger. Mm. And also, the, he asked for the age of the nappy. Yeah. Sizes. Was it? It's very good. good. If the baby's irate, then the mother's going to be irate. Yeah. If you can calm the mother down, then then it, it's a big help. Yeah, you did really well, Aaron. Well done. Well done. Does that mean we get a date now? <laughs> no. <laughs> Britannia headquarters in Luton. Arrangements are being made for a passenger with special needs. He's got a skin condition, so he blisters easily if you touch mm. him or knock him. Um, he's taking a special pump on board as well. How yeah. big's the pump? He doesn't actually say, but I thought if we sit him at the front... Seven-year-old Scott Schofield is going to Spain with his mum, Alison.
He suffers from a rare condition called epidermolysis bullosa. His illness is characterised by blistering of the skin. He's got fragile skin, which um, is both on the outside of his body and on the inside, internal linings of his body. <coughs> this morning, Scott's got blisters on his eyes, which means he can't open his eyes. Um, it's erosion on his eyeball, which is caused just by his eyes moving in his sleep, which rub on his eyelid. <coughs> Tomorrow we've got a, a special meal that needs to be ordered from Mrs Schofield. It's on the 464 Alpha. It's a child meal that needs to be liquidised. No lumps at all. Right, I'm coming. I do bring up Scott in the way that he's got to stick up for himself and not to be frightened or ashamed of his illness. I might have blisters, but I'm still a normal little boy. And I like doing what other boys do, especially football. Scott's eyes are expected to heal before the flight, and Alison is hoping he'll be able to enjoy his holiday. I'm really looking forward to going on my holidays. I love aeroplanes, I think they're great. At Manchester Airport, Cathy Duffy has her hands full. This is turning into a bit of a nightmare, darling. The Woodhouses have turned up for their Palmer flight ten minutes before takeoff. Well, we, we run a public house and it's a very demanding business. And uh, one thing after another, and we've just got, just got behind so far, you know. It's incredible how things crop up. I just got a call a couple of minutes ago from check-in saying, Kathy, we've got a problem. So I said, what? She said, we've got two people turned up. So said, what? They're still expecting to catch the plane, but they're so late their seats have been resold. It turns out that Thompson's have done some seat sales, OK? These two people have now turned up, and the cruise passengers, they're not just passengers wanting to go on the flight, the cruise passengers. <laughs> if they miss the plane, they miss the boat and the start of their Mediterranean cruise. Thanks, guys. Let me just have a quick word before you close. But there's nothing Cathy can do. Have a quick word with him, Deb. There are no spare seats. Her priority now is to prevent a delay. I would, I would go. You've got, right. you've got all these people on board who have the right ticket to be on this plane. I think you should go. Right, let's go. You've got the right passengers. Pat has found her second nervous passenger of the day. Okay. Michelle, yeah, do you want to come down with you? No, all, right, all right. Wait till everyone's on and then just get on and go. Have you had a drink? No, I don't drink. All oh, right. <laughs> I can't recommend that then. The Palmer flight is leaving, unbeknown to the Woodhouses. Well, hopefully they're going to come and let us know exactly when we can go to the gate and which gate we've got to go to, and we can get there as fast as we can. Um, take off and landing. I have my head between my knees and I and I grip the sides of the seats and pray and cross myself constantly. But it's worth it. Time to break the bad news. They couldn't take a delay on it. Oh dear. We can take you to Malta on a Britannia flight tonight. The ship goes from here, it goes to Malta. Yeah. We can get you to Malta um, so that you can meet up with the ship on Sunday afternoon if that's what you want to do. Finally they're off and still smiling, even though they've paid £90 extra and lost two days of their cruise. Little do they know, their troubles are just beginning. Scott, his mum and his granny have arrived in good time for their plane. His eyesight has returned 
just in time. 18 up. Scott's thrilled. His granny's terrified. Granny's nervous, but Captain Clack has known worse. We were, we were actually coming back from um, Santa Domingo and somebody asked if they could have a flight deck visit. And uh, we, of course, always trying to... Uh, we, we always allow flight deck visits if we possibly can. And a gentleman came up with his wife. And uh, the wife was actually wearing rather short denim, denim shorts and sat on the jump seat behind us. And we were chatting away to them and uh, asking whether they'd had a good holiday, showing them a few things around the flight deck, just a general chat. And he did mention that his wife was rather nervous of flying, and, um, but we thought nothing of it. And then all of a sudden, she just suddenly said, oh, I've got to go to the toilet. And she disappeared out of the flight deck door and towards the front toilet and with her husband following. And we didn't think anything of it, and we just sat turned back around and we're chatting together and all of a sudden we realised that there was a rather strange smell in the flight deck and in fact unfortunately the lady had had a accident on the seat on the flight deck floor and trailing all the way to the uh, back toilet she'd uh, had a rather serious accident and to the extent in fact that the first officer actually went on oxygen because the smell was so bad. Your cocktail yet? No. Can move them on. Well, look, here's your lunch. That's what it's, he's been moaning for. He's well, he's starving. Scott's special meal has arrived as ordered. All right. Is that nice? Cigarette spirits, any wine, cigarettes, tobacco. So, why have you just sold me 600 fags if I can't smoke one? Come on, that's not on that. You just saw me, you've taken my money off me to see some roof bags and I can't smoke listen, one. Why? I, listen, I take your point, but they sell condoms in boobs. Need I say more? <laughs> <laughs> Northerners, when they go on holiday... Spend all the money. If you've saved up £500 for your holiday, you don't want to come home with any money left. So if you come back and you say you had a fab holiday, I went out with £500, come back with nothing, spent everything. That is a brilliant, brilliant holiday. Come on here with £50, don't they? got £50, what can I buy £50? Pounds? They just want anything to use all the money up. Gatwick, they say £500 up for the holiday, they come back on the flight. Do you have a good holiday? Come back with £200. Pounds. The Green Hill Hotel Derbyshire. Landlords Graham and Marilyn Woodhouse are back. But their holiday video is not what they'd hoped for. I would say it was near enough the holiday from hell. They'd been due to join their cruise ship two days late when it arrived in Malta. And we took the video camera out and so they could purposely watch the ship coming into harbour and watching it come across the bay. And then all of a sudden it did a massive U-turn and went away from Malta. They were just amazed that we'd seen it come in and then go away. Bad weather had prevented the ship from docking was speechless. <laughs> Plans to travel to Sicily and then to Rome to catch the boat fell through and the couple were stranded on Malta. All we did for that week was move into three hotels and then back to Manchester. Two very disappointed people. Back on the training course, the cabin crew hopefuls are learning emergency drill. Fasten the body bolts. I've not got a um, uh, Lindsay and Kirsty are first up for the most feared part of the course, the smoke-filled cabin. Keep the communication up, right? Make sure you're okay. Can you do it all right? Yeah. Just relax, it's panic. Can we just get in and do it? Yeah, come on. Right. You get in and get in. Get right down. Get right down on the floor. Keep holding the Lindsay. <laughs> They have two and a half minutes to find a body. 
It's hard to breathe, impossible to see, and the cramped conditions often induce panic. Well done. Oh, that was well awesome. Well done. That was brilliant. Excellent. Excellent. That was so awful. Yeah, communication in there was absolutely brilliant. I could hear everything you were saying out here. Oh, I think I might cry. I know. Oh, that was awful. That was the worst thing I've ever, oh. ever had to do. It's the worst thing you'll ever have to do. <laughs> I'm, I'm not doing that again. We had to find it. Did we do it in two and a half minutes? Yeah. But at least I have to do it for three years. You don't have to do it again. for another three years. <laughs> in Spain, Scott is enjoying his holiday with one problem. It's just... Um, I don't, I, it's limited access for him, I think, in certain places. But well, like on the pool, then I tried to get into water around the pool, and because of it all being little stones and things, it's um, difficult for him to walk on, and it's painful on his feet. I bet you can't dive under. The Spanish people have been really nice with Scott. They know there's something wrong, but they're not rude, and they don't stare at him. I love it in Spain. It's the best holiday I've ever had. I wish I could stay another week. At Manchester, a first time flyer for BJ. Hello. Who's the nervous one? Me. me. <gasps> and why are you nervous? Because I've never done it before. You've never flown before? No. <gasps> God, mate, it's two of us. Really? God, you're just flying your way Sorry? Never, ever, ever, ever flown? Never, ever. God. <laughs> so you're looking forward to it? No. Well, you can be nervous, but you can still be looking forward to it. Well, mixed feelings, you know? Yeah. But, but why, why are you nervous? If you haven't done it before, there's nothing to be nervous about. If they'd let me drive it, I'd be quite happy. <laughs> If they let you drive it, I'd be nervous. <laughs> well, that's what, eh? I mean, I'm not bothered if you're nervous. <laughs> I've seen passengers a lot more nervous than her. Um, they refuse to get on board the aircraft, or if they actually get on board the aircraft, it's, well, they're just, Inconsolable, really. They're in tears. It's one of those things. If you, it's like being scared of, of spiders. There's no, there's no rational explanation for it. And I'm trying to get into these bloody napkins, and I can't. Yes, I can. Back at the training course, Jason and Aaron are still trying. I pulled these two girls. They are so nice. They are really names? nice. The names are Sarah and Sarah, would you believe it? Sarah and Sarah. All right, cool. It's amazing. And for once, succeeding. There's a little step up, yeah. right, so don't trip when you go in. I'll, no. I'll show you in. And there's lots of buttons and controls. For as, God's sake, don't touch anything, because no, I'm not no, doing no. loop the loop tonight. As, as soon right. as I walk in, I mean, can I just see? Well, Can I see out, yeah. you know, well, all round? Remember, it's dark. Yeah, so I know, but I mean... you're not going to see a lot, unless we're travelling It's all glass, over. isn't it? Oh, yeah. So I can... Yeah, yeah. So Honestly, what, what am I going to see when I get out there, then? Well, you'll see the captain, you'll see the first officer, you'll see lots and lots of controls and lights. And, and the captain will probably turn around and speak to you, and he'll just chat to you. And, if I and suddenly, you can ask him any question you like. If I suddenly disappear and come out, it's all right, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, of course it is. But you won't feel like that. See, we've got those bumps again, haven't we? You get bumps in the car, don't you? Yeah, but I'm driving it. Well, he's driving this. And he's yeah, probably a lot more qualified than you are. Right, let's let this gentleman out of the way, and I'll okay. take you in, all right? OK. After you, you yeah? Right, I'll take you in. It's not a lot to see, honestly. Come on. So if I, I mean, if I just want to come out, I'll come out, all right? Of course right? you can. Just a door here. Yeah. Okay. I can't do this. What's your name, by the way? Jenny. Jenny, come on in, Jenny. I'll introduce you to the captain. Oh. Right, pick up. 
lots of lights. That's all. Come on, darling. Oh my god, I don't know. It's like the TARDIS. Oh, screw Yeah, I know. Gosh, it's, it's just so amazing. I mean, I can't believe I'm actually seeing it. Jason's no longer flying high. <laughs> you got blown out. I don't know where they are, man. I don't know where they are. <laughs> As well as the brace, 20,000 hats, one ukulele, and an artificial leg were left on board last year. Scott has decided he wants to be a pilot when he grows up. That's a plane and it goes And the Woodhouses are planning another holiday this year, but definitely not a cruise. On board airline tonight, a VIP passenger in Venice. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> Trouble for BJ. In fairness, they, they can't have any more drinks. I was on a pistol for last like... night and didn't get up. <laughs> so we had to get a different flight. <laughs> and Kathy flies a thousand miles in search of love. I sit in the apartment all day waiting for him, that's fine. And then we got the night, <clears throat> so to speak. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. If you can use some exotic booze, there's a bar in Far Bombay. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. Magaluf in Palma, Mallorca. A favourite with British holidaymakers. But although the sun shines, the new airport is causing problems. There are actually two departure areas in the terminal now, Terminal A and Terminal B. And Terminal A here has a walkway uh, from the departure level, which is in fact two kilometres long. Do you want to hurry, please? This is the only overseas airport where Britannia have their own staff. Seven passenger officers to act as sheepdogs. <laughs> it's a good 15 minute walk down there, so give yourself plenty oh, of time. Yes, we will. Some airlines use scooters to cover the huge distances. But Britannia staff have to run. And then there's the language barrier. You're going to take them down in the lift, the wheelchair passengers. Oh, oh no hablo espanol and poquito. Hi there, are you travelling to Little at all? With Britannia? Pardon me? No, you're not travelling with Britannia, no? No, I'm okay, not. Okay, pardon, sorry. Estos cuatro pasajeros que no entiendo qué pasa. Oh, no comprende, sorry. They're just sitting over there, wheelchair passenger. Uh, I've sent your friends on, so we can just put you two on now. Will somebody be coming to take them down in the lift? Did you leave it up at duty free? These passengers make it. Right. Oh, ballet. Right, OK, let's okay. go. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Right. So too do the wheelchair party. I'll make sure that, you know, he does get you on. He'll look after you now. But just when it looks like BY571 Bravo will leave on time, there's yet another hitch. A passenger has collapsed with a suspected stroke, and the paramedics have been called. Are you all right, Mr. Astrick? Yes, thank you. Yeah? Yeah, thanks. All right, thank look you. after yourself. Yeah. I'll, I'll see you in a bit anyway. All right. The medics have said 63-year-old Jim Raystrick is unfit to travel. He and his wife, June, are being taken to a Spanish hospital. Now the Raystrick's bags must be found and offloaded. At Britannia's East Midlands Training Centre, each recruit must prove that they can close the cabin door. As it's still moving. Yeah. That's it. Go on, go on push. Push it. <laughs> no, wait. 
goodness, you've really got Watch me do it again. Yeah, go. Have a nice holiday. Have a nice holiday. Have a nice holiday. The other trainees can relax. They've all been successful. <laughs> got much better control on the door anyway. Right, start lifting the handle. This is a manoeuvre qualified cabin crew have to perform every day. If Joe can't do it, she fails the course. <laughs> oh, goodness. What would it? No, it's not very close. <laughs> no. Back in Palmer, Jim Racetrick is taken to hospital. But finding and offloading the Racetrick's luggage is proving a slow business. Passengers and crew have already been held up for 20 minutes. Well, my daughter should have just finished her driving test by now. I wonder if she's having a better day than I am. Eh? Suzanne is supervising the search. It's hard work out here, very, very hard work. Personally, I find it very frustrating because, as English, we expect it to happen there and then. But with the Spanish, they take things very slowly. And if you want something doing now, you say to them, right, do it now. And they say, yeah, yeah, and it's like manana, manana. I just think it's very strange that one's there and, and the other one's in the... Hi, it's me. Any word? No news from the test, but my wife got a distinction for part of her uh, Open University thing, so I'm certainly becoming the thicker of the family. Four daughters and a dog, and they're all cleverer than me. This is Joe's 15th attempt, and she's getting tired. <laughs> She's got me up to open doors on the aircraft. Besides. She's upset. She's crying. She'll get one last chance later this afternoon. The Racetrix bags are finally found. And as the plane prepares to leave, Captain Birrell gets a call from his daughter. The plane leaves two passengers behind. Jim Raystrick is now in hospital. On reflection, I think it's... Uh, I'm a uh, bit of... Although Jim doesn't like it, <laughs> I'm better being here than somewhere in the sky being ill. And I'm really, really satisfied, 100%. I just wanted to get him home, that's all I wanted. <laughs> it's a slight technical delay, something to do with the engine, so I'm just going to find out how much longer it's going to be. A month ago, Cathy Duffy was stationed out in Palmer. Now she's back at Manchester, dealing with a delay of her own. If anyone's asking, or does ask, they're taking the aircraft off stand, they're going to do a few engine runs. It's nothing major, they just want to check something. Um, obviously, don't frighten them, because if you say engine, they're going to get scared. Tomorrow evening, Cathy flies back to Palmer to be with the man she met there and fell in love with. <clears throat> He's a nice guy. He's just so nice. You know, we have a great time together. It's fun. No, I'm looking forward to it. She doesn't want a long delay, and nor do the passengers. It's not fair when you have to come for a certain time and then you just palmed off. We've been here since half past two. You know, you expect to fly out. It means we're missing a night out when we get there. So we're very pissed off, basically. I thought they'd fixed it. They said they'd fix the problem, they're just going to do checks. Yeah. But the checks are taking longer, is that what you're saying? No, the, check, the checks haven't checked. All oh, right. It's tech. <laughs> Joe, go. I know the procedure. Go, Joe, wait. <laughs> it's late afternoon, and this is Joe's last chance. Yeah, that's it. Excellent, well done. How do you feel? I don't know, really. It's just, I can't believe it, really. It's just... You've done it. <laughs> 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 
that fuss about then earlier. After four hours waiting, a new plane has been found. There's just one problem. It's got no fuel. What is that about fuel? Right, basically what was happening is the fueler has sat down for his dinner and has said that there's no way he's going to get away until he's finished his dinner. So but he's not given us a time or anything like that? He said he's not been notified of this flight. Hello, BP. You wouldn't like to do an extra aircraft, would you? What, the 578? Because we're absolutely shafted here, we can't find anybody to do it. At home, Chief Steward BJ is getting ready for his own night flight. I've had lords and ladies on flights, famous film stars, obviously Joe Public, and I want to look the best. And I've got to cut myself shave and I don't believe it. Tonight, BJ's flying to southern Spain. Among his passengers, the Heesman family. I've taken these two along because he drinks too much and they look after him. It's true. Ted, I said, I know why she's done that because he likes his booze. I said, she wants us to keep her eye on him. My case is gone. Gone. Speak for takeoff, Alpha, call me on the town 11862. Good morning. Mind your elbow. That's it. Speak for takeoff. Sure, you don't want a red one? Red one's the nicest. Oh, yeah. Sweet for you. I've got one, but I'll have another one. Have another one. Oh, I another one, love. You want a green one? Could you also please ensure your bags? Oh, Oh my God. BJ's flight leaves on time, but in Manchester, patience is running out. Uh, yeah, can I have the wheelchair? Yes, we're going to just pop all down for our free boards in a minute. The wheelchair's on the floor. It's getting out of hand now. We're just going to put calls out in a moment for all our free boards. After six hours in the airport, the passengers finally board. I'm so pleased. There you go. Bye bye. Bacon. Thank you, darling. We've got this, this absolutely mad woman in 29E. I'm sure, I'm sure we're a passenger short of a full load tonight. It's going to be a lively flight. In the front cabin are two passengers determined to have a good time. <laughs> in fairness, they, they can't have any more drinks because it's illegal to be drunk on board an aircraft. And they might not be drunk, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't say they were, but I think they're heading for it. It's quite a bit, isn't there? There's no point going on a plane, this is going to be staggered, isn't it? Going on early, yeah, it's when you're already start, it's at the beginning, isn't it? Look. They're spending a lot of money with us, they must have spent nearly 50 pounds already. Three bottles of red, uh, white wine, one bottle of red wine, two vodkas. It's not it's for dinner, isn't it? <laughs> Do we get the other end of it completely proliferated? One of them I know doesn't like flying because he mentioned that when he boarded. He, he did look quite pale. The one with the suntan is actually, um, he was actually looking quite pale. Uh, but he's got a bit of colour back, uh, as you can see. We shouldn't even be on this plane. We should have been out at 7 o'clock this morning, but I was on a pistol four last night and didn't get up. <laughs> so we had to get a different flight. <laughs> what can you want? You've only got one liver, haven't you? Might as well knock it out when you can. Thanks, sir. What else for you both? I've travelled sort of, well, a lot of times, and this is the worst meal that I've ever had. The meat, I think it was dried in the pastry, where you just couldn't eat it. Um, the chai chicken was excellent, very tasty. The steak, I've had worse steaks in very good restaurants piping hot and excellent coffee at the end. First class. It's very, very nice. It's very hot. It is, honestly. I've flown British Airways. Everything, and this is much better food than British Airways. No, it's not. Oh, shit, it is. It's <laughs> <laughs> right up your ring up. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's cack. The Manchester delay is over, but the moaning isn't. Welcome on board. 
flying absolutely terrifies me. The fact that I've been no, sat in an airport for a, four, and, four hours has just made it even worse, so now I just feel extremely stressed. <laughs> Right, I'll see you again. All right, Darren, thanks, thanks very much. much. Okay. Kathy's Love shift is finally over. See, you are you in tomorrow? I am. Tomorrow Long evening? Because I'm going to Parma tomorrow night. I'm on four. Five days, but it's standby. Can I come with you? No, I'm going to meet a boyfriend. Do you mind? Oh, that's not good then. I'll see you when I get back. Bye. <laughs> see you later. Bye. But true love seldom runs smooth. Trainees Aaron and Jason are just four hours away from qualifying as Britannia cabin crew. Bonjour. Last night, they were out celebrating. Jason started chatting up a couple of girls and uh, I thought it was all going all right. We were singing and all that, but, but uh, I think she had a boyfriend. Yeah. Is this Tracy Farron's purse? Yes. This yeah. is evidence. Look, our trainer was in our room last night. She's left her purse. There's last one night. final Girl. assessment to go before successful candidates well. pass out in the wing ceremony. Jason and Aaron must be ready in 15 minutes. First to be assessed, Jo, fresh from her triumph over the cabin door. Hey, Jo, for your overall performance, what I've brought for you is Jo has done very well on the course, even with the fact that she has two small children. We had a problem with the door and the mock-up, but she overcame this. Jo has a warm, friendly personality and will just be wonderful with our passengers. I wish her the very best of luck and she is going to make an excellent cabin crew member for Britannia. Thank you. Well done. Thanks. Yeah. That's lovely. Right, you cry now. That's alright. Next, Aaron. And uh, I think that you're going to do very well on the line. I think you're going to be popular. And as I said to Jason, I mean, I'll say it to you. I think. It'll be better when you pair a split up. <laughs> I think that there have been times during the course where I thought, you know, maybe you're going a little bit too far. It's been a gruelling four weeks, but everyone's through. Spice boy, Jason. Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Second Spice Boy, Aaron. Aaron. Oh. <laughs> well <laughs> Aaron and Jason are now fully qualified cabin crew. We've done it. <laughs> Within days, they'll be representing Britannia in the air. <laughs> That's your portion. Here, here, here. <laughs> oh, boy. Cathy's preparing for her big trip. She's returning to Parma, where Matthew, her English boyfriend, works. Oh, well, I haven't got much more to pack now. Uh, Angel Delight, because he's mad on chocolate. Crazy boy. Again. With real chocolate chips, that will really impress him. Some casserole mixes, because I'm doing all the cooking. Cathy feels that with Matthew, a barman 13 years her junior, she's finally found a relationship that works. You can always have a holiday, can't you? But you can't always find a Matthew. <laughs> so, no, it's Matthew. I'm going out for him, basically. I sit in the apartment all day waiting for him, that's fine. Just sit on the balcony, sunbathing maybe, while he's working. And then we've got the night, <clears throat> so to speak. At Venice Airport, news that a VIP passenger has just arrived. Oh, I'm excited. Britannia representative Lilla Comparetto is masterminding arrangements for her onward flight. Nice to meet you. I'm Lilla from Britannia. How was the trip? We made it fine. Very good. She's been fine. Has she? Yeah. Did you have to stop on many occasions? Or? No, we stopped a few no. times just to check temperature and yeah. make sure she was fine. Yeah. Had a very good journey. That's good. That's good. The passenger is a 14-year-old lioness called Kimba. 
She's been rescued by the Born Free Foundation, who found her huddled in a tiny, filthy cage outside Genoa. Britannia are flying her to a new home, a wildlife sanctuary in England. Kimber's lift has arrived, piloted by Captain Clack. about missing his slot. Well, we've got a 16-minute airborne slot. Really, that means we should be pushing back within 10 minutes. We've got one more container to be loaded, which is now happening. Um, I think we're going to make it. <laughs> Kathy has arrived safely at Palmer Airport, but there's no sign of Matthew. I'm here. Why are you not here? You're supposed to be meeting me. Oh. No, I thought you were going to ring and see if it was on time. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, Matthew. I'll see you in a bit. Bye. Bye. I should have rung him. <laughs> so I was on the flight. Oops. He's on his way. Matthew lives a short drive from the airport, but 45 minutes later, he still hasn't arrived. Ladies and gentlemen, you may like to know that we have a rather unusual passenger on today's flight. She is a 14-year-old lioness called Kimba. I feel like on a bit of a high, actually. I, um, I reacted quite strangely when I saw the lioness. Um, I actually had a tear in my eye, which is not like me at all. I just, I expect when, the, when they actually pulled um, the cage open and she was staring at me and I just, it really did hit me. Of course, it's very important to uh, remember what you're carrying in the cargo holds of the aeroplane. Because if we're carrying livestock, we have to keep the cargo heat on or else the livestock will freeze. And if we're carrying flowers, we actually have to turn it off or else the flowers will actually wilt before we get to our destination. Likewise, recently there was a carrier that uh, arrived at Gatwick with a consignment of tropical fish. And they forgot to turn the cargo heat on. And when they opened the cargo uh, holes, the uh, chap actually found these fish, frozen solid. I do feel a sense of achievement because people have just been full of compliments all day. Um, and, and I do, I feel quite happy, yeah. If you were going to pick somebody up, you'd go to arrivals, wouldn't you? You'd use your common sense, wouldn't you? Arrival. Yeah, OK. You should be here by now. Cathy has now been waiting nearly three hours. It's Matthew. Hello. Not on the camera, Matthew. Thanks. It's past 3 a.m. The journey from the bar that Matthew's parents run to the airport should take just 20 minutes. Thanks. Right, I'm going now. Goodbye. It's been a pleasure. Jim Raystrick was kept in the Spanish hospital for seven days. He's now made a full recovery. Kimber, the lioness, arrived safely at her destination. Sadly, she later died following an operation. 
and Cathy's romance is over. I think in my heart of hearts, I knew it was coming to an end. From his point of view, I think it was just, it was an ego boost. It was airline, cheap flights to Disney. That's what I think I was for him. Now, looking back. On board airline tonight, Jason's first flight. And he's learning the hard way. <laughs> Red alert at Terminal 2. We're evacuating. And the lads determined to go mad in Ibiza. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. If you can use some exotic booze, there's a bar in Far Bombay. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. It's 8 a.m. At Manchester Airport, the Santo Domingo flight is about to close. We're still two passengers missing, um, and we're just waiting to see if they turn up. And if not, me and Denise are going. <laughs> On the tarmac, turnaround is complete. If the flight closes, we, we will let the pass. It's all right, you get lost. Where's your, where's your husband? He's just parking the car. Oh. Thank you. We can't do anything until your husband's here, I'm afraid. The aircraft's due to depart. Britannia only fly to Santo Domingo from Manchester once a week. Miss this and you miss your holiday. Shall I just go and have a look? Yeah, just go and see if you can see him at the door. Yeah. Yeah. Passenger service officer Pat Baines has to make sure the aircraft leaves on time. Lovely. So we are down by two. They're here, they're here. Has he got the boarding cards? All right. Have you got your boarding cards and everything? Yeah. Right, okay. I'll bring these LRPs they're here. Just hang fine, she's going to come down. through with you so That's that you can. If they can get them down now, then we'll take them. Otherwise, it's a, a chance. I mean, we've still got passengers boarding, thankfully. Excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> These holiday makers have been lucky. Yankee Charlie leaves with a full load. Pat's worked at the airport for three years, but she dreams of becoming a stewardess. I would like to fly, something I've always wanted to do. The boys will still need me, but not as much, not in the same way. And I think it's time for Mum to uh, start to Are spread her right? wings. Yeah. So I'm going to go for it. They're taking care of you. Now, what would we do? In the crew room, trainees Aaron and Jason have made it. It's time for their first flight as fully trained cabin crew. And Jason is getting a first day tip from BJ. Look, look, handle, handle, look. Oh no, oh no, no, it doesn't go up. Yes, it does. Now wheel it. Fuck off. I'll carry it like this. Have you seen this? Look, look, look. That's how you do it. No, I can't, honestly. It makes me go red. Oh, is this a sexuality thing? Well, I don't know what it is, but yeah, it's just I know like it a... Yeah, it is. It's just like a firm breast carry. I don't know, I don't understand. 37,000 feet up, and the new boys are hard at it. Aaron, this tropical fruit juice, is it in a carton? Or is it just orange juice? Sorry? Or the pina doradas? Is it orange juice? Pina colada. Pina doradas. Dot doradas. Is it orange juice? To, um, go down and see them. All right. We'll be back in one second. This lady was off to drink and she said, oh yes, I'll have a, I'll have a schnapps, please. And the steward said, oh, I'm very sorry, madam, we don't carry schnapps. So she said, what do you mean you don't carry schnapps? We've just left Austria. So we said, well, we left Luton this morning. We don't sell Vauxhall cars either. <laughs> At breakfast in the front cabin, Jason's about to fall prey to the tradition of playing a joke at the expense of the first timer. No. 
<laughs> yeah, I've been walking up and down the cabin and I've seen, I haven't seen that many nice girls at the moment, unfortunately. Um, most of them come along with couples. So I'm a bit out of luck. Hoping for the return flight though. Back on the ground, the press are onto a story. At Britannia's head office in Luton, press officer Kelly Radley is fielding calls. Kelly, what's the hurry? There's a lizard on an aircraft. It's like five joking. inches long and there's like so many media inquiries about it. Oh, no. So I've just been down to Ops to get some info. I've sort of faith for people back. <laughs> In Manchester, the plane is being cleaned. Hi, I'm just phoning back with regards to the gecko on an aircraft. The air flight was returning from Barbados to Manchester and row seven reported seeing the lizard on board. No, no, I'm sure the geckos were scared of us and we are of it. The lizard needs to be found in case it finds its way into the plane's electrics. Rob, the engineer, has been called in to sort out the problem. The cleaners leave. Lizard hunting isn't part of their job description. You've got to either find it, kill it, or disinsect the aeroplane or fumigate it. So uh, they couldn't actually find it. Well, we're just cleaning the aircraft and we were just told there was a lizard on board, but it's nothing to do with us, really. What, what happens to the lizard? This is a job for the fumigators. They've got a tank of fumigation gas. And what they're going to do, they're going to put a hose in through the electronics bay hatch up into the cabin. And then we'll shut the aeroplane up and they'll pump the gas in. The gas is lethal to all forms of life, including human. It's a perforated plastic hose and they run this tube down the length of the aircraft and the gas inflates it and it just leaches out into the cabin. And with the aircraft sealed, they leave it uh, in here for about four hours. So they're almost ready now, they're just tying it up so it, uh, it gives the best spread. And uh, we better get out of the way before we get poisoned. The gas is ready. The plane is sealed. And so is the fate of the lizard. Fifteen miles up the motorway, preparations are underway for a lads only trip to Ibiza. Andy Proctor's going for the club scene. Andrew used to come on holiday with us when he was younger. And I'm quite surprised that he's going off to uh, abroad, really, because we, the wife and I have never been abroad. and. Uh, Usually we spend our holidays in the islands of Scotland where Andrew used to come with us and we also used to go into uh, Wales as well. Next then, T-shirt. His best mate Andy Gorman lives down the road. Put that, that one, one in there, that's the one you had before yeah. we got you from London. And this one... This, we're going to have to do this right, right, because... They won't go in, won't go in. Probably rain over there anyway. Yeah, it was 35 degrees, what? Rubby. <laughs> what? We'll be in Wales, in sunny Wales, and he'll be there, and it'll be pouring down. I'm going where the sun shines brightly. I'm going where the sea is blue. I've seen it in the movies, and let's see if it's true. Can you start off by putting your hand luggage on the scales one by one for me? Any bags over five kilos will need to be separated, all right? Ever seen it like it in your life? <laughs> the brittle toaster! <laughs> Pat's interview for the stewardess job is next week and she wants to get home early in time to prepare. I know it's Saturday. I know I want, I want to get off tonight. But tonight things aren't going to plan. The office and check-in areas have been evacuated. More than 500 people are affected. Quite scared. Quite scared. It's never happened to us before. Uh, brake glass alarm actuated, flagship restaurant. Just been a brake glass actuated in the kitchen. We've responded as normal, and it's just turned out to be a false alarm. 
Relief all round, and the Ibiza flight boards on time. The lads have even had time to get to duty free. Thank you. Where are we sitting, Rob? Um, well, it's unfortunately your worst nightmare. It's um, a night I'd be the Saturday night when I should be going out. My worst, unfortunately. So um, I'll expect young, happy, merry, um, very merry passengers. So could be potentially difficult. We've got two bottles of brandy, bottle of bottle of Southern Comfort, bottle of Jack Daniels, and Sorry, a bottle of. Quizavie or something, some posh cognac. Proctor said it was nice, so I thought, well, we'll buy a bottle, eh? The thing won't even shut. Dave Law, it's important. <laughs> For Pat, the night's not over. Pat's Dave Blower. Good evening, gorgeous. Uh, we have a little problem. We've got a passenger that's lost his passport. 19-year-old Ray Livingston should be flying to Mallorca, but somewhere between check-in and the departure gate, he's lost his passport. Where's he gone running down to? Hey, I told him to go and check the toilets to see if the... Uh, if it's Have you there. checked his bag completely? Yeah, checked the bags twice. Perhaps. You've emptied everything? Ray's search has proved fruitless. Just wonder if he's slipped through immigration, you know, sometimes there's a big queue, they might have missed him. I don't suppose uh, any of you old gentlemen have picked it up at all, have they? I'm just wondering whether it's in your hold or by That's chance. That's what I thought, but then I was thinking, how could I get to your passport control? Because surely I would have got my back at passport control. Because it can happen when you've shown your passport yeah. and everything. But none of them showed the passport through passport control. Did you show your passport through passport no. control? Ray's only hope is that he didn't show his passport at passport control, but put it in his hold all, which is now buried deep inside the plane. I mean, we can't go. Uh, you see, can't go if we've got an old passport, can't go. What are we going to do? Yeah. Finding the bag will take time and cause an even longer delay, but it's Ray's last hope. Responsible is a good word. That's how I'm kind of feeling. At Manchester Airport, the baggage handlers must find and unload one bag out of 250. Exactly. Ray Livingston has lost his passport. It looks like he's lost his holiday too. Is that one yours, boss? That's the one. And if it is going to be here, it will be here. Sunrise Pilot, WW2564 to Dalmar. Ladies and gentlemen, the exert coach is coming past. Baggage is reloaded and Ray is on his way. Excuse me. Almost. Have you forgot something now? The money is your traveller's check. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, have a nice holiday. What did you get? So there's money and his traveller's checks. <laughs> holiday mode, it happens all the time. Switch off. As they say, what's that saying? The light's on but nobody's in. <laughs> The last flight is away. What do you fancy doing now? Uh, Busbiz? Yeah. yeah GNT before bedtime. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> we got, got it. Four o'clock this morning. We have not slept. In Ibiza, the lads are already in the thick of the action. On his return flight, BJ's had reports of two abusive passengers. Uh, you've been drinking, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're not too bad. Not no, 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 I, I, don't, I, I don't mind. You can have as many drinks as you want, except that, did you know it's illegal to be drunk on board an aircraft? Really? We're well, not too drunk. No, I didn't we're just say you were. Drink, but like, I'm just we saying... just want to relax us. Yeah, sure. Night. But did you know that? No, we no didn't, I didn't, I didn't really. Didn't but know. Know. Right, OK. Sure. Um, it's also not our policy to accept people who use foul language. Oh, no, if there's no. any reports of any bad language, if there's any trouble between you and your friends... No, 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 no not at all. Uh-uh, hang on. Yeah, go on. We stop where we can. Yeah, yeah. You two get off, your friends get off. Yeah. You'll probably be met by the police. Yeah, You'll yeah, probably yeah. be put in a foreign jail and you'll be asked to make your own way home. 
They've had so much. I mean, technically, possibly, we shouldn't be carrying them, but I don't think they're going to be abusive. I don't think they're going to be troublemakers. They're going to sit there and they're going to sleep. Just relax. Just relax on them. <laughs> Damn. Gas like Britain. <laughs> And sleep they do. Back in Ibiza, Andy Proctor's found himself a girlfriend. His mates aren't impressed. <laughs> Complete holiday romance. Not shut up about her. Always going on about her. They've exchanged phone numbers and all sorts. Sad, really. The two Andes are having very different holidays. I'm looking forward to going on, but Proctor's on about staying next season, doing the season out here because he's loved it so much, he's been here twice now. I've had enough though, spending too much money. One dear island this is. Andy and Caroline have become inseparable. Oh, you big. <laughs> The day of Pat's stewardess interview has arrived. Husband Paul is on hand for moral support. It's something that you want for a long time and then when the actual moment comes you start panicking a little bit, wondering whether you have actually got the attributes that are required. There is no time limit on this exercise, but experience has taught us... It's Over one long day, candidates sit exams and are weighed, measured and assessed. All right. OK, go ahead and good luck. The first test is the most feared. It's maths. It's a long time since I sat down and did any exams. I'm not too bad on the multiple choice, but I think anything to do with maths, um, you know, it wasn't my best subject at school. But when you've given a length of time and you're doing it as a test, you sort of just look at it, oh, good grief, you know, it's a long time since I did any of this. I wanted to get the job so much because she'd be so disappointed if she doesn't get the job. The last two days have been just a bag of nerves. I think I've blown it. <laughs> I really feel so nervous today. It's terrible. I'm really not happy. I don't know if it's because I just can't calm down or I just not like me. I've tried to think back to how I am at work and I'm trying to relate that, but whether it's come over, I don't know. Whether I'm overreacting, I just don't know, but I am so wound up and I wish I wasn't today. <laughs> so, chaps, I think I'll have a coffee. All right. I've just got through the nerves. Like to slip your shoes off for me. Cabin crew must stand five foot two and their weight must fall within strict limits. That's fine, thank you. Okay, that's fine. You can walk okay. Yeah. okay. There's one more paper to test whether Pat has the right personality for the job. She's the last to finish. It's time for Pat to learn her fate. Right. Would the following people come with me, please? That's Pat Baines, Mandy Booth, Farah Bowen, Sonia Jaspel, Nick Papworth and Samantha Wagg, please. Just like to follow me this way, please. All right, so that's uh, one, two, three, six of you. Well, unfortunately, I have some bad news for you, everybody. On this occasion, we're unable to process your application any further with Britannia. I'd like to thank you at this point to, for all the, the enthusiasm. Do have you any idea what perhaps let you down? Oh, I just wasn't... I just knew straight away when I started. I just didn't feel comfortable it at all. It was your height. It was your height. You know we have the minimum... She's missed out by a fraction of an inch. I'm so annoyed it's my height. 
Yeah. I really, really am. I've got so much to give. And I know, I know. And that's what makes it hard for me. <laughs> I'm filling up myself sorry, now. No. Thank I'm you. so sorry. I would love to have been able to say yes to you, but when it encroaches on the safety and with the minimum height restrictions. No, that's quite all right. It's been a pleasure to meet you. It really Thanks has. So much, all right. Thank you. Okay. You take care. I will. All right. Yes. Yeah. There's something for me somewhere in Britannia, and I make sure there is. <laughs> well, if you stretch by I next really... month, come back to us. I'll try. Oh, dear, and I've got big boys as well. Oh, no. <laughs> How dare oh, they? Six foot one, good grief. Pat's only hope is to find an airline who'll accept her at just under five foot two. So bye, bye. Tonight, the lads fly home. There's just time left for Andy to try and win the karaoke competition. But back in Luton, trouble's brewing. At the moment, all hell's breaking loose. Um, we have a 757, which is technical in Naples, which is going to give us a big problem with Ibiza because we have no aeroplanes to actually cover the Ibiza at the moment. Our standby aircraft is also broken and our crew is rapidly running out of hours. The only other crews we have don't start until tonight and they're all over the country. We're going to have to bring them all into Manchester to, to try and do something. That's assuming we can find an aeroplane. Andy Gorman's still going strong. There's only you in my life. And so is Andy Proctor. The only thing that's right. Hello, crew report. Excuse me? So that, was that an emergency? <laughs> sure enough, Andy's won. I'm out of here, I've had enough. For Chris, it's the end of a 12 hour shift. I'll let you sort the rest of this mess out. Oh look, an apple. Sheila, have my apple. I didn't get a chance to eat it. Good night, everyone. And at Ibiza Airport, the knock-on delays are about to be felt. At the moment, it's three hours, but apparently it's not left Manchester yet. So it could be anything up to about seven. Eight, that looks that nine, one. Ten, it's been a bit of a week, actually. We had a bit of a delay on Wednesday night as well. Just 14 hours. In this situation, most people opt for sleep. The, the drinks and, and the food is so expensive in here. The seating is uncomfortable. So I would rather have been left at the hotel because then I could have gotten a towel from reception and gone and had a wash. They're not going to give me a towel in here, are they? Dawn in Ibiza. At 8am the plane finally lands and the boys are on their way. These passengers won't cause any trouble. Pat is still looking for an airline with a lower height limit. Andy's holiday romance has blossomed. He and Caroline are now engaged to be married. And the lizard was finally found, trying to escape through an air vent. On board airline tonight. Football's coming home, flying in on Britannia. We ran out of champagne, opened all the bottles, we ran out of lager. Aaron fights to keep his job. She was like having a bad day that day, and I'm just saying I caught the brunt of it because I really, honest to God, wasn't rude. I need three glasses, all with ice, please. And BJ's shaken but not stirred. Make it snappy, make it snappy, come on. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away If you can use some exotic booze There's 
the bar in far Bombay Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly The summer is almost over for likely lads and novice stewards Jason and Aaron, who are enjoying a stopover in the Dominican Republic. This is nice, mate. This is this is slightly nicer uh, than um, Barbados, except for in Barbados there's more single women than there are here. Everyone just, this here is, is getting full of married, married or couples, got married. Yeah, or honeymoon. Been together for donkey's years. Would recommend it to the lads. Not a lads' holiday, but it's Definitely certainly not. a nice holiday. Yeah. When they get back, they'll find out if Britannia plans to keep them on. So they've got one last chance to prove themselves. They've just put some those savoury snacks in, like they're... Who's done it? Um, John Glasper put them in the same in the like the life jackets. When they're going to open them up and put them on, all the savoury things will fall out. Jason doesn't realise his seatbelt has also seat been booby trapped. And adjust like this, and unfastens like this. Your life jacket is kept in a pocket under your seat. If it is needed, take it out of its container and put it over your head. Wrap the tapes around your waist, bring them to the side and tie them securely in a double bow. To inflate the life jacket, pull the red toggle sharply downwards. Ladies and gentlemen, your seatbelt should now be fastened securely to take off. Before we make a final check of the cabin, please fold away your table and put your seat back upright with the armrest down. Cheers, mate. Wow. Thanks for that. Wow. Thanks for what? Oh, yeah. What happened? What happened? You just seen the state of the passenger. Oh, my. Biscuits wow. everywhere. All over her hair. Never. All over the carpet. <laughs> all in her husband. You're a joke. What tells? Right. This is our first long haul trip. <laughs> so basically what I've done to help us along the way because otherwise, because we're new, they'd be looking for us to make mistakes and they'd be picking up on it and taking a piss. So I've drawn up a little uh, a guide. It tells me and Jason basically where we're working from. On our boarding zones, the meal service, the second meal service. Basically it's got everything that we need to be doing on there. And that's a copy flying. for me and a copy for him so as we uh, can look like we know what we're doing rather than looking silly and like, ooh. <laughs> Halfway across the world, and the night shift at Manchester Airport has a problem. Another family is about to come a cropper over their passport. What we've had to do is speak to Special Branch, and they're going to send somebody through to have a word with me. Um, what could happen if we send you on this, the airline could be fined, and basically it could be anybody that's just written a child onto your passport. So um, I'd suggest if you can get the birth certificate here, that would be a great help. We've written in James's name and the passport, the son's name in it. We did it last year. We flew with it last year and it were all right. I've just spoken to Britannia again. She's actually going to phone the head office in Luton and see what they've got to say, but we do have to speak to Special Branch as well. Right. OK, so yeah. basically we've just got to wait for somebody to come. We were just thinking if somebody could fax one through, would that help? See, I work at Chesterfield Hospital. Right. And I so I can see. get to a fax machine there. Yeah. A uh, gentleman's just suggested if somebody could possibly fax the child's birth certificate through. I know it's not the original, but would that be acceptable? It would. All right, then. Thanks a lot. Ian Summers has just one hour to get the birth certificate. The family's £500 holiday to Spain is at stake. It's the late night flight from Ibiza, and Chief Steward BJ Aldridge has got some thirsty passengers. Uh, we've decided, as it's such a short flight time, Sarah, and most people want to buy. Excuse me? Oh, no drinks. We want a meal. Uh, we want to do duty free goods instead of drinks. Well, you know, it was just his attitude. You know, so I said, I'll serve you a drink, no big deal. I said, let's not make a fuss. Well, unfortunately, the first person that I spoke to said, um, Aren't you doing drinks? I said, well, we've decided against it, so because we want duty free, you know, we want to sell duty free goods. And he said, we don't want to buy any duty free goods. So I said, well, if, you, if you're that desperate, I'll, I'll get you a drink. So he said, well, yes, I would like a drink. So I said, well, don't make a fuss. You know, I'll serve you. You know, it's not a problem, no big deal. But it was just the way, you know, he got a bit funny. So I thought, best I serve him. Anyway, I've got more to do now. Suddenly, it's drinks all round. Cardi and Coke, gin and tonic, Southern Comfort. Whiskey and dry with ice. Yep. I'll be back in a sec. 
Hello, is that there, please? You see him? Can you get that, please? Hello, we've got a bit of a problem here at the airport. His passport isn't um, filled in properly. And what they're saying is they need a copy of James's birth certificate to prove that he's our son. Is there any way you can get to Louise's mother, to, to get the key off Louise's mother, to go into our house, into the bureau, and you know that folder that we have in the bureau? But you know where the bureau is in the front room? There's a folder in there, and under B or C for birth certificate, James's birth certificate's there. Now we need that birth certificate then, faxing, faxing, well, you'll be able to fax it from Chesterfield Royal Hospital. At last, it looks like things are falling into place for the Summers family. The special branch have just come back to me and they're quite happy. They've done, yeah, they've done all the checks and... Right, sorted. So my dad's got to get the information down to the hospital. The hospital's got to get the information down to the fax machine and then from there they're going to fax it down here. So it should be about half an hour, hopefully. Lemonade, please. Lemonade. And a glass of ice water, with sparkling water. Just ordinary. See, what it is, is they, they take out two drinks and two more people say, oh look, they've got a drink, quick, let's get one ourselves. Yeah. So then they have a drink as well. But that's why it's just the rear cabin, so nobody at the front knows what we're doing. Exactly. <laughs> well, one person asked, and he was very rude, so I had, to, I had to serve him. And then of course all the people around him said, oh, well, we'd like a drink as well. But they were really nice, and I didn't mind doing that. But then everybody else wanted a drink as well, so like, we doing, there was only two of us doing tea and coffee, the rest were doing drinks. Oh, kid okay. Yep, yeah. alright, done in cheers. Um, right, we're just doing top-ups. Although coffee, Special Branch has given the OK, Britannia are still nervous about letting the Summers family fly. What, what the problem is, you see, because that's not, it's, you know, you've written on the passport, Immigration in Girona could decide to just send you back and might not let you in, and that's the problem, and then the airline would be fined. You've defaced an official document, which sounds serious, serious, <laughs> you know, but that's what they're saying. And I've spoken to an, um, what they call an ops superintendent in Luton, who I've asked, can he try and, you know, take it a little bit further still and see if, you know, anyone will let this one go. So we're doing as much as we can. Thank you. With minutes to go before the flight, Pat Baines rings HQ for a final answer. He said no. Right. So Vic said no as well. Right, OK. All right, my love, thank you. Bye. No, I'm sorry, they won't. So what does that mean then? Well, I can't let you travel this evening, no. But they said they said you've defaced an official document, and that you know that's just not allowed, unfortunately. I can't let you travel. I suppose they've done all they can do, haven't they? But you know, at the end of the day, we're not going anywhere, are we? And just pretending they're not letting us go anywhere. But that's it, isn't it? That's that's what we're lumbered with. At Luton Airport, a reception committee is waiting for some very important passengers. The England football team has just held Italy nil-nil to qualify for the World Cup. They're coming home on Britannia. David Beckham, last time he came down here, I sang to him. I <laughs> sang, like Mama, I love you. <laughs> Mama. Dude, it's just a good job I can sing. Also in attendance, David Beckham's number one fan. He's supposed to be engaged, but um, that's not true because Victoria was on Big Breakfast a couple of days ago and she said that she wasn't getting married. <coughs> Still a hate. Yep. Yeah. Big hope. <laughs> when they come through those doors, all the nation <coughs> will gel as one. And we're we're and representing we're the entire nation. <laughs> <laughs> As the party atmosphere builds up in Luton, the Summers family aren't going anywhere. Despite the convoluted efforts of Britannia, Special Branch, Chesterfield Hospital and Ian Summers' dad. I said something about having to go to the hospital to tell the person not to open the office up to send a fax. No, it's not for me.
I'm not laughing. Oh, yeah. Oh, me. It's just the full store. No, it's just the old media. You've got to send the facts. The people are running all over the place to send the facts. I know. The recent thing. Can't do. <laughs> I'm shocked. <laughs> the family eventually flew out two days later. It's 4 a.m. and the triumphant England football squad has just got in from Rome. It's a hero's welcome. It's been a long night for the crew that flew them back. They've been on their feet for seven hours. The food was fantastic. We had steak and we had a couple of glasses of water. And it, was good, it was a good night. We ran out of champagne, opened all the bottles. We ran out of lager. Ran out of Libra milk, which is their favourite wine. <laughs> it was very nice. The champagne was much better. <laughs> well, Steve McManaman. Oh, I have to be so cute. Yes, <laughs> I don't recognise hardly any of them because I don't know the first thing about football. So, I mean, I wasn't being offensive, but I didn't know them. We played at the challenge of their own game by diving, cheating, trying to con the refs, um, wasting time. Um, We've done everything they, that they did. And on the landing, um, Gazza initiated the singing, you know, England, here we come for the cup, you know. So I didn't even put on the landing music because I thought I'd let them do their repertoire, it seemed appropriate. Would you just give us a little look inside your limo? Not really. You can have a little look if you want. Go on, what does it have in there? Oh, you've got TV in there. You've got a TV and a radio, but what, more than anything else, it's, uh, it's nice and comfortable. How do you feel? I'm so happy. I really am happy. Oh well, Brilliant. I'm happy. I love you. I've got to say that. I've told about a hundred times, but never mind. Oh well. As the season draws to a close, it's D-Day for new boy Aaron. Britannia are ready to tell him if his contract is being renewed. There are no vacancies for the winter season, but will he be asked back next spring? Aaron knows there have been problems. Right, I'm going into the office. I'm in, uh, I'm in deep dodo at the minute. I've been in trouble a fair bit since I got here, and now I've, uh, I've been called in um, again. And I've got to go in now and uh, speak to Julian about it. He is a bit of a charmer, definitely, uh, as I'm sure you're aware. Um, he probably thinks that that will get him through life, where unfortunately, um, with us, that won't. You need, you need more than the charm. I'm going to have to flag it up there big time. I'm just going to have to try my best to, to, get, to get kept on next year. He might think that he can get away with things, but, you know, at the end of the day, um, I am his, uh, his manager. And, um, you know, he has to be told. Wish me luck. <laughs> Air Steward Smith did not show on report for 11.15 Hagada. All telephone numbers in the system were tried in order to contact him. However, then what disturbs me more is then, which I spoke to you about last Saturday, Alison, the crewing officer, said that you had a very bad attitude. They called you at, on standby, when you were on standby, at uh, six in the morning. If I was rude, then fair enough, but I really can't, for the life of me, remember anything to do with that phone call that they could have taken as being rude. I've spoke to people, like I said last night on the phone, and mm. they said they've been effing and blinding because they've been called out. But, you well, know, at that time in the morning, people, you know, it's, it's a well-known fact throughout life. No one's very good in the morning. No, You'd be not. insane if you was to wake up and say, hello, there, you're calling me out, brilliant. Ah, oh, thanks very much. Which it's is fine, but they, they do, but to be honest with you, Aaron, in all the years I've been a manager, I've never had a report that says, um, that you weren't interested in the number one or where you were going. For some reason, this woman was going through the menopause or something, she had a she's bad young, day. Garen. She's only young, Garen. She's well, in, she's she was early in season, time of the month, whatever. She was like having a bad day that day, and I'm just saying I caught the brunt of it because I really, honest to God, wasn't rude. Jason has also been called in to discuss his future. 
Um, it's good news. Right. It's very good news. Um, what's going to happen with you is that we're going to be asking you to come back in February. Right. Yep. Now, the way that your work performance has been this summer, you've been really, really good in that. But Although he's coming back, Jason will be laid off during the quieter winter season. Um, if we had the place available, I'd love to turn around and offer you a job. Okay, yeah, sure, I understand. You should walk out there and feel really pleased with yourself yeah. because, you know, I personally I would have loved to have been able to offer you that job because of your work performance, mm. because you have you have done really well, well this summer. And you've Can I, really is there well. anyone else on my course who will be getting a contract? Are there people on my course? No, 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 no. one on my course. No. Oh, that's all right, no. that's pleasing to know. No. You see, I've flown with you, as you know, and yes, you were great on the flights, but you have to be. We have to be reliant on you to be there on time, or to be the, or to be available for duties. That's why we have standbys, and if we don't, because we have to make sure the flights go on time. Um, now, I can't rely on you to do that, and this, this is just the evidence that goes with it. Um, because for some reason, you've, you're excellent on the. You're actually very good on the line when you're on your flights. You've got some very nice assessments. You've also got some, some assessments where they've said, OK, you need a bit more time um, and you weren't aware of certain things. But generally, you've done fine. But what's very disappointing is that you've got these things all relating to being unavailable um, or missing a flight completely. Yeah, like I said, I do, you know. I won't put up an argument when I can see it's heavily stacked against. I do like you. Excellent. Um, good for nice person. But I just feel that um, I have no other choice but really to lay you off at the end of October. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry I have to say that really, but what choice do I have? Oh no, I don't, I don't suppose you have any choice, mate. All right, thanks, Alan. Aaron's career at Britannia has lasted just five months. There's nothing in the world I could have done to stop what just happened in that office. I was getting the bullet from from this morning from yesterday and I knew it and there was no there's no use crying over spilt milk I've got the sack you know I'll live another day and I'll get another job but you know, there's no use walking out of here oh, God, God, I'm just gonna go and play golf now Kathy Duffy has spent the last 17 years dealing with problems at Manchester Airport today she's got some bad news for a passenger who's already boarded the plane home, yeah. she can't take off yeah if you can get her off if you get her off bring her back up yeah, we've just been advised that um, we have a passenger on this flight. Apparently, her husband, who's at home, is not travelling. There's two. She's travelling with one, one other friend. Her husband at home has taken ill, so um, she's got a message, or we're trying to give her a message to ring home. In the meantime, just in case um, she may decide not to travel because we don't know what the nature of the illness is, we're going to try and locate her bags so we don't cause a big delay. We've just no. Have, um, has your husband been a bit poorly? Or He's in respite. Right. Well, there's been a message. Can you ring him? What's at the uh, respite and the daughters? Oh, we know. What was the message? Just to ring him at okay, home to or to ring her daughter? Um, yeah. Can you quickly ring your daughter? No. Uh, daughter. Yeah, which daughter? Do you know which daughter? My daughter in Berkshire, the one in Sheffield. I don't know that one. That was the only message we got. Whether he stays in. Now, what, what do you think I should do? Then just take me off the plane. What should I do? You found them? Yeah, they're in two different bins. Yeah, but you've got the bags. Well, we haven't got them. We know where they are. Oh. Just one second and I'll make the decision. You won't know which... With over 300 passengers waiting on the aircraft, Cathy must take action. Right, we know where your bags are, but it's a decision as to whether to take them off or not now. We need to make that decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not rushing. You take your time. You've got enough panic. Hello? Chief Steward BJ is getting ready for a big night out. And being at the Albert Hall on the last night of the proms and everything else, I, I feel a big orchestra playing Royal Britannia. You know, last night of the proms. Just something I thought of. He's off to the Travel Trade Gazette Awards, where Britannia is in the running for top charter airline. It's set to be a glittering occasion. I mean, the salmon's lovely, but it's very dry. So we're waiting for the sauce. It's nice, though. Oh, it's nice. Yeah, it's don't get me wrong, dry. it's dry. <laughs> we keep having to drink. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>
Jason and Aaron are saying their Shut farewells. <laughs> <laughs> what are you like? I got the bullet. I know. I you got kept on then, yeah? No, not over Christmas. Back in February. Oh, that's better than nothing, isn't well. it? I try and take it as as light-hearted as possible, but there are some people that it's like their, you know, it's their life. They're like, ooh, I love this job, and you know, do it right. Whereas I'm more sort of, yeah, let's just let's, let's, let's get it done, take chill out. I've given up my life for the company. My own problem, I know that. My job has always come first, that's why I'm still single at my age. I've given up boyfriends because of my job. They couldn't put up with my shifts. No, they couldn't put up with them. My job always came first, I'm a single female. Do you reckon it's a go? Because I need to know, because of the hold. I need to know if you're going to go. Oh. I don't think I should go. She said you looked much better to me. She's with the restaurant. I'm going to go then, and I'll ring you from Palmer. I'm going. I'll ring the restaurant. At the end of the day, pretend you say, we have got you for your personality, don't change. Then as soon as you get online, they want you to change. They want you to be like a little Britannia robot. <laughs> Meals, drinks, service. And it's like, I don't... That's what I don't agree with. I do enjoy the job, though, I definitely do. But it's just... I just didn't want to change, and obviously, that's why I'm out. Which leads us Saturday night to nothing to Top Charter Airline. Good luck, everyone. Oh, I hope we bloody win this thing. Aaron has decided to go back to hairdressing. He's currently looking for work in Dubai. Jason spent his winter on the dole. He's now back at Britannia for the summer season. Pat has left Britannia but is still pursuing her dream of becoming a stewardess. BJ's promotion to chief steward has been made permanent. And Kathy is now in her 18th year at Manchester Airport. All I've ever known all my life has been aircraft. It's just a way of life for me. I'd be a bird tomorrow if I could. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. If you can use some exotic booze, there's a bar in Fall. 